Cosmic Clash. This is one of my original childhood toys. I've managed to keep hold of this for 33 years. I remember getting this for my birthday in 1982. I thought it was absolutely amazing. My very own personal shoot 'em up. Previous to this, we had um, a TV console, a Atari VCS or 2600 as it's known. We had to use the only TV to use the console, so this was fantastic. It meant I could play games on my own without needing to ask permission to use the television. I mean, look at the design of it, it's fantastic. I love the little ashtray there on the control panel. Hit and fire counters, how many shots you've taken, how many hits you've actually managed to achieve. You've got the on off switch there, which is power of course. The fire button, which is your only real true control. And the pro and amateur switch. Denominations there, which are 25 cents and 50 cents for two and one games, which is interesting because there are regional variations for this and we've got the American coinage scorecard, instructions, even got the coin door and the cash collection box there. Really was a superb design, it still looks excellent on the shelf today. Okay, let's have a look at the back here. So we've got the battery compartment with a hinged door so you don't actually lose the door. And I haven't got the right kind of batteries. What have I got? I've got AA batteries and we need D cell batteries. Oh dear, I wonder if there's anybody friendly who could help me out. Mm -hmm. Maybe a Canadian. For sure. Maybe I should look down the rabbit yes. hole. Down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. And thank you very much, PC Baker. Um, yes, this is also a down the rabbit hole video. Both PC Baker and myself are going to be talking about this machine. Uh, it was called Arcade Attack over here, and um, Tommy made it, and it's a, it's a really great little device. I was actually going to be reviewing this for my Triple H section when PC Baker mentioned he'd be doing it as well, so we thought, oh, let's both talk about it. Um, well, now you've seen the box, you've seen the actual toy, so uh, let's get into some gameplay. Um, what I like about this, and the reason it was going to be part of my uh, Triple H section, is it, if you're of a certain age as a gamer, you remember those old cog-driven mechanical, electromechanical games that were in the arcades, like uh, the, the, the skier on a couple of pipes going over some carpet and that kind of thing. And this toy, or this game, replicates that really, really well. Um, you've essentially got a row of uh, UFOs going back there, and you just shoot them, and the laser goes up. It's a very, very basic game, and I'm about to show you here, but it it just it screams of that era of the of the um, the arcade, and I just I really really love having this in my collection. This is probably one of my favorite parts uh, of my honoring handhelds that I have. So let's turn it on now. Um, let's see if I can do this holding it here. There's a score in here, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, there's two skill modes. Some people think that it's broken if you, because uh, if you set it on this, the UFOs go by at a, at a set rate. And some people think if you flick it to this pro mode, it's broken. It's not true. It actually makes a randomized speed for the, um, for the UFOs to go past with. And I prefer having it on that setting. Anyway, let's, uh, let's fire it up and have a game here. Let's see if I can hold it properly. And apologies, it is rather noisy because it's, it's running on two, uh, D-sized batteries to run the engine and all the, the bits and pieces inside. Anyway, here we go. So there's the UFOs. Let me see if I can line up a shot. Darn it, I missed. The voice is actually on a little, um... Missed again. Uh, the, the voice and the sound effects are actually on a little miniature record. Got him! There's the explosion. Do another shot. Ah, missed. Let's do one more here. And yeah, you can almost see there's a light there that indicates when the, the recharge is finished. Got him. See that light? When that turns off, that means I can shoot again. Right, I'm going to miss him. Let's see if we can get another one. Fire! Terrible shot. Terrible shot. All right. Missed him. Let's go for another one. And 
Well, I obviously hit that, but that was a very, very close shot there. Uh, I'm now on seven shots. Let's do it again. Correct hit. Uh, and I think I... There we go. Game over. Uh, the reason that's game over, and this is something I'm about to reveal, um, my arcade attack is actually broken. And I'm going to show you the inside guts here. Uh, I've, I've took the thing apart. First of all, it was super noisy. So I've actually put a little muffler thing over the speaker, which again, I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, but I also noticed that the score wasn't working. In fact, when I first got this, turning it on, the thing didn't even work. Uh, so I had to do a little repair work and I just figured, well, you know what? Let's, um, let's show you what the problem is and show you inside this device. You'll notice, um, whenever I did the turnaround there, you can see I've had to cut along here. So, um, if you're ever wanting to do a repair on these things, yeah, you, you will need to slice this thing open because you undo the screws on the back and then you're going to pull this apart. So I've already done so once. Um, you must think, oh, that's disastrous. You've destroyed this awesome toy. Uh, fear not. You can actually buy replacement stickers on eBay. I got this for, uh, I think, 10 or $20 at the most. Haven't it opened it, haven't opened it up yet because I figured, well, I'm going to be doing Arcade Attack for my Triple H section, so I've held on to that. Um, maybe someday I might actually try and repair this. I'll show you exactly what the problem is with the score. Uh, and then I'll hold on to this and, and, you know, I'll put these on at the very last stage so that I, I can restore my Arcade Attack. Let's show you what's inside this thing. Now, what is inside Arcade Attack? Well, let's show you. I've uh, removed the screws off the back. I'm just going to very carefully pry it open here. You can see there's the rear that just holds the, the battery power. And here we have the sort of um, central processing unit, if you can call it that, made of uh, various cogs and wheels. So, uh, let's take this out, if we can. Actually, let's just... There we go. There's the front face plate removed. Now, you'll notice I've got this uh, little bit of cotton batten or uh, paper towel there. That's Without that, that speaker is super noisy. Anyway, let's pull that away. And there is Arcade Attack. It's a little bit dark, I realize that, but... Uh, yeah, if I, if I rotate it around, you can see down there, let's see if I can pull it closer to the camera here. Um, down there, this is the speaker, and it's very, very noisy, and a little arm moves across a spinning disc back there. It's essentially like a little record player, and um, that does all the voices and the sound effects, so it's, that's pretty cool. Uh, but, man, that speaker is noisy. Anyway, if I now remove this housing here, you can see the actual guts all working. Uh, there's the laser. So essentially just a light shines, and when you push this button, it causes the disc to turn, which makes that little line move. Um, and the explosion is kind of neat. I'll see if I can actually have a game here and show you, but... Um, what it is, it's this um, slit uh, screen thing here, and there's two levers, two arms that move back and forth, and they give the explosion effect. It'll, uh, it'll be more obvious when I try to play it. Now, why did I take mine apart? Well, first of all, when I first turned mine on, it didn't even want to turn on because this had come loose. I had to actually uh, put a new screw in there, so that, and that's the main on and off switch right there. So that, it, it wouldn't work without it. I had to do some repairs. Uh, but my problem that I still have here is my score. Um, these two numbers, I believe uh, you've got 10 attempts to shoot, and how many can you get in that 10? So these two are supposed to, this one's supposed to increment each time, and this one goes 1, 2, 3 as you actually hit the UFOs. What I'm finding is this little spring right here is just not strong enough. It doesn't, it doesn't move forward the uh, the timer properly. So I'll be playing and I'll have about, oh, I don't know, I'm halfway through the game and, uh, you know, it says, hey, you've, you've suddenly reached the end of the game. And I'm like, what? And that's because this spring isn't very strong. If I could only find a replacement spring there. Anyway, now let's, uh, let's show you the game. I apologize. I'm going to, I'm going to edit the sound. It's going to be much quieter in the audio here or in the video that I'm showing you than 
you're, I'm actually about to experience because it's super noisy. Anyway, here, let me show you the whole thing operating. There you go. That's what's actually running inside there. I love how this little Venetian blind thing moves across to make the explosion. Um, yeah, that that's what's actually inside Cosmic Clash, Arcade Attack, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so I just thought I'd show that off. Anyway, uh, well, mine's all in pieces. I wonder how PC Baker is doing with his. Uh, and uh, until next time, we'll see you down the rabbit hole.